What's up guys, I'm Pierce from Snappy Data and uh, today I'm here to show you our, uh, our new code example we recently added to GitHub. Um, this code example is actually based on a, a blog from a couple years ago posted on the uh, Chimpler blog uh, called Implementing a Real-Time Data Pipeline in Spark Streaming. And essentially what he did here was uh, he used an add a add a Linux example to uh, just show how easy it was to, you know, implement some, uh, some real-time uh, OLAP queries uh, on Spark Streaming. Um, so what we did is we sort of took that example and modified it to fit with uh, Snappy Data. Um, and what we really wanted to do was just show how easy it was to you know, ingest uh, data into Snappy uh, very fast, pre-aggregate that data, and then run you know, interactive OLAP queries on top of that data. And do it using uh, Snappy Data's SQL engine as opposed to just uh, you know Spark APIs. So um, a little uh, view of the architecture here. Um, you know some data is coming across coming across from you know multiple websites into an ad server, uh, goes into Kafka, and then uh, you know comes into Spark Streaming where it gets pre-aggregated, um, and you know then it gets stored into the Snappy Data store where you know arbitrary number of JDBC or ODBC clients can come in and run interactive queries on the data. Um, uh, looks like this, basically, uh, you know, you have a timestamp, a publisher, an advertiser, uh, a website where it was advertised, the geography it was advertised in, uh, the amount that was bid on it, and then a cookie just to try and uh, get some user information. These are the raw logs, and then you know, as they come into Spark Streaming, they get uh, pre-aggregated. Um, so we pre-aggregate them uh, based on a publisher and geography, and we compute the average bid, and uh, the number of impressions, and the number of uniques. Um, so the number of unique users that viewed the ad uh, every two seconds. And what we want to do is maintain uh, the last day's worth of data in memory for interactive querying. <coughs> So this is what the, you know, the pre-aggregated logs actually look like. You have a timestamp, publisher, geography, you know, the average bid, uh, the number of impressions, and the number of uniques. So um, we have we have an example, you know, with the vanilla Spark API. That's from you know this blog that's based off of. There's also an example in a in this repo of doing uh, all of this work with just uh, Snappy Data extensions inside some Spark code. So if you're if you're not as interested in the SQL stuff, you can look at that. Um, and then we also you know have the SQL based version, which is described uh, in the README. So you can follow along uh, here if you you know don't want to use the SQL way of doing things. So we go through some code examples here. Um, and just kind of show you how things were built. Uh, so if you're interested in that, definitely worth looking at this stuff. Um, some key things, the pre-aggregates, or the aggregations get um, ingested into a column table, uh, you know, for OLAP querying, and then we also ingest from the column table into a sample table. So um, this is uh, specific to Snappy Data. It's what we call our approximate query processing technology and essentially what we do is uh, we create a sample table uh, based off of this column table and uh, we create a, a query column set based off of uh, the columns in the, the columnar table um, and a fraction of how much data we want to save into the sample table um, and basically this goes through and, and samples data from the columnar table at a, and maintains that table in memory and it's much smaller than uh, the original base table, as you can see here, um, and so when you execute queries on it, uh, you can have you can basically specify an error rate and a confidence interval, and it will make sure that um, while the answers are approximate, they stay within that uh, that error rate, and uh, they're obviously they execute much faster because it's a much uh, smaller table. So we'll be showing how that works as well. So the first thing we have to do is. Uh, of course, download Kafka here. Also, we have to download uh, Snappy Data. So this link's right there. Get the zip file. 
get that downloading. Um, and we, I already have uh, JDK 8 installed, so I won't show you how to do that. But you do need JDK 7 or 8. Um, then what we'll do is uh, git clone this repo. Just to desktop as well. Um, and the first thing we're going to do, so we'll get that and get Kafka unzipped. Okay, if there's a little blip on the recording there, it's because uh, Zookeeper managed to stay running on a port. So uh, I'm going to get Zookeeper running here by uh, copy and pasting um, this line straight out of the repo. Hopefully. Okay, good. Um, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and just start a default uh, Kafka broker here. Okay, again, if there is a blip, it's because uh, Kafka was already running. So I'm going to go ahead and start Kafka by pasting the line out of the repo. Um, and I've run this example before, so it's finding uh, some of these old topics that I had started. Um, but what you would do next is go to the root Kafka folder and create a topic here. So just paste that. Um, so from the root Kafka folder, now I think it's going to tell me that topic already exists. Yeah. So in, in your case, uh, it would create the topic. Um, and so I've checked out the snappy POC directory, and what I'm going to want to do is run this uh, Gradle task. So let's do that. Error. Okay, and that's starting to build. Uh, you can also uh, get some uh, IntelliJ files if you want to import this into IntelliJ. And so once that's done, um, what we'll do here is uh, edit some files in our snappy data download. Okay, so in the conf, we'll duplicate this. Delete template and copy. Use sh and open it with Sublime or whatever text editor you like. Okay, looks like that was uh, completed. So we'll take this. We got to add this to that file, which is the Spark env.sh. So anywhere we want to edit. And we got to make sure that the correct path is there. So I think we'll go from root users plan desktop snappy POC. And definitely leave this open because we'll be using that again. So we'll save it and go ahead and start the snappy servers. So let's go to another terminal window, open up the snappy folder, and paste this in the root. Hopefully I don't have any servers running already. And OK. So the net, once that finishes, we'll basically submit a job to the cluster through the same terminal window, uh, pointing snappy at that jar that was built uh, in the past step. Okay, it looks like it worked. So I'm going to paste that line. And in this line, as you can see, you have to point it at that jar, so uh, you need to remove the snappy POC home here with the correct file path. So we'll go ahead and delete that. 
and grab it from here. Hopefully I put in the right file path. Okay, and we'll go ahead and press enter and hope that it works. Okay, as you can see the status here is the job started. Now we haven't started actually streaming anything, so what we have to do is go back to the snappy POC folder and send this other Gradle task. And it's going to build real quick and then it should start sending data. Yeah, sending Kafka messages to topic, add impressions topic. Okay, so now that we have data coming in, uh, we can go query the data and see what it looks like. So we'll go back in this other terminal to the root snappy folder, and we'll go into the snappy shell. So the first thing you want to do in there is connect to the local uh, running version of Snappy, and we'll we'll set the uh, Spark SQL shuffle partitions fairly low because there's not a ton of data, and that should keep our latency a little lower. Uh, you also can sh in this um, shell you can show members just to see what's connected. You can see the three servers here. Um, first thing we'll do is just to make sure we're or just make sure we're getting uh, ingested data. We'll just do a quick quick count of the uh, column table, which is agar add impressions. See we got about 80,000 rows. Um, we can also directly, so the way that Snappy works is you uh, create a stream table uh, to model the stream coming in and it looks just like a SQL table so you can actually query the stream itself. Um, you can see that's that's the batch it's currently on. Um, so the first thing we'll do is just run a basic OLAP query here. Um, what we do is find uh, the top 20 geographies with the most ad impressions. So a little select count. Um, so these are essentially the, the top 20 geographies with, of course, the most ad impressions on the left side. Um, and then now let's also find uh, the total uniques for a given ad grouped by, uh, by geography. So I'll just copy and paste that. That comes back pretty fast. Total uniques, geography on the right. So those are two uh, basic OLAP queries that we've been running on the, uh, the columnar exact table with the exact data. Um, now what we want to show you is how to run them on the sample table that we created. So in this case, uh, since the data volumes are low, you're not going to see a big uh, decrease in latency. Um, however, if the you know in a normal like production scenario where the data volumes are much higher, when we ran these queries, uh, they would execute much faster than the the previous queries. Of course, with a, a small error rate. So, just you know, uh, just to look at these um, approximate queries, you can see they're the exact same query. Um, they're even the from clause is even the same table. The only difference is we've added at the end here uh, with an error rate 20% and a confidence interval of uh, 95%. So by specifying that in the query, uh, Snappy Data knows to go execute over the sample table, even though we didn't specify the sample table itself. So let's go ahead and do that. Just paste it, and you get back. Um, well, obviously the data's changed because we're streaming, so it's kind of hard to compare to the earlier exact query, but you can see how easy it is to, uh, to query the sample table. And then this is also uh, the second query we had above, um, but executed over the sample table. So we'll go ahead and send that one as well. Um, you can see it here. Um, so, and then also you can, you can query the sample table directly without using, without specifying an error rate and confidence interval by, of course, just throwing it in the from clause. So go ahead and do that. Just uh, the same query, but uh, directly from the sample table, as you can see. And then we also can uh, check the size of the sample table here. Uh, 
Um, and as you can see, about 100,000 rows. So, um, so that's that's the end of the the example. Um, of course, the goal here was to show just how easy it was to do these things. Um, one thing to keep in mind is you can go look at, um, let's see, I think it's this file here to actually see the code. And you can see it's not actually that much code, um, but you can go see the actual, uh, you know, SQL strings um, and just see how easy it was to, to create that stuff. Uh, and also, as we also have the uh, the code that's just um, using the Spark API and not using SQL, so you can see that as well. Um, so hopefully that kind of showcased how easy it was to do this stuff. Um, in our next blog post on on this repo, we'll be showing a benchmark against uh, a number of other data stores that work with Spark. So that might be a little more exciting. Um, so uh, if you have any questions, we have a bunch of uh, ways to, to reach out to us here at the bottom of the repo and, of course, some, uh, some important links. So I uh, hope you take a look at the repo and try the example um, and let us know if you have any questions.